You are you are the one who sent me a message in uh, Piazza. Okay, good. Etang. Okay, so let's start now. Um, so let me recap. Um, so, so far in this class, like as I said in the beginning, maybe like the first half of, of the class, we, just, we are just going to try to see several characterization of expander. Uh, it's actually going to be five different ways. And we have seen three ways, uh, three, th three things that characterize expander. One is from the robustness wheel. So that is expander is exactly the graph where uh, it, it is robust against any uh, adversarial deletion. That's the first thing we saw. And another one is cut. Basically, expander is like a one that is, um, so um, if you compare, um, you have an expander and another graph, but with the same degree profile, then every cut of expander will be kind of dominate uh, the cut in another graph in size. It's like the one that have maximum size uh, If you look in flow way, then yeah, if you have any, if you have an expander and another graph with a, uh, that is like um, same degree profile or less, then that graph is going to be embeddable into an expander uh, with small congestion. So that is like, and this is like a um, characterization. It, it holds if and only if the graph is an expander. So, that's like uh, three ways. Um, all of these are kind of still combinatorial. Today we're gonna see like completely different way. Uh, it's gonna be algebraic, uh, which is based on uh, uh, eigenvalues. So this is an area, like a part of the area called spectral graph theory, where roughly speaking in this area, you would have 
you have a graph, and then you need to define some metrics related to that graph. Here you have a graph, and then you define some metrics M. And then you try to study um, eigenvalue of M and relate it to some combinatorial property of, of the graph. Like, um, like draw a connection between algebraic property and combinatorial properties. Okay. And there's a like very nice, great textbook by uh, Dan Spielman. Um, so you can have a look if, but so before I start, um, I just need to, uh, we need to review some uh, linear algebra fact. That is, um, if you have, if you have a, an, a matrix which is uh, symmetric and real, so you have a matrix M and it's symmetric, so something like 10, 8, and this should be A to 6, yeah. And each entry is from real. Then um, we can prove that there will be like a real eigenvalues, lambda from lambda, lambda 1 to lambda n, and real eigenvectors that are orthogonal to each other, right? So there will be like a, n numbers and n vectors that are orthogonal to each other, such that when you multiply uh, vi to m, then you get you get the same thing, but with just some some scaling. So this is this is actually like the definition of eigenvector. It's a vector that after you apply it by m, then m doesn't do anything except scaling. And how much it scale is like a, the eigenvalue with respect to, to that vector. And moreover, uh, you can just write M in, in this way, right? You can really decompose M into, into, um, into the sum of other product of, of uh, sum of the other, other product of eigenvector. Uh, just a comment. You sh here you should have also normal, right? You should need, like, you need VI to be. Oh, to be. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, that's second equation. Right? Yeah, yeah. Autonormal. Thanks. Very good. So, normal meaning that is one. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, so by the way, um, I'm not sure if, like, you how how you internal how how you internalize this fact uh, by yourself. But at least um, I will not prove this. But I, I will just tell you how how I remember it. Um, I'm not sure if that's the way you 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 uh, you remember it anyway or not. But so look at this picture, actually. And um, so basically, if you have any matrix M, which is real and symmetric, then you should, the way I think at least of, of M is like an, an ellipsoid. So it's, it's like, uh, is like this, um, but can be more than two dimension. Okay, can be like this and this thing. Yeah. And um, so, how how does this ellipsoid define? So basically, you just if you have like a, a sphere here, then you just say, okay, what is the mapping? Like how how does each of the point here is mapped by M? So this if this is X, then this is gonna be uh, M X. Um, so so when you map every every point in in the unit sphere, then you will get ellipsoid like this. And then um, and then what is the uh, eigenvector? Is really like the just the ex excess of of the ellipsoid. So this is gonna be one, 
one direction, v1, and this is uh, v2. And then uh, the eigenvalue basically just say how much you stretch east of, of the axis. So that is uh, the way to think about it. Uh, a matrix, real symmetric matrix is just ellipsoid. And, um, and it can be described by just the excess of, of the, this ellip ellipsoid. Yeah. OK. May I ask if, if this is a way you, you think about it anyway, or um, like, because I never learned, like, I don't have a, a like, linear algebra class uh, formally, so this is just something that I pick up along the way and find that useful. But, uh. Okay, anyway. Okay, next thing is just, once you have this picture in mind, then the, um, this, this fact will gonna, gonna be kind of Easy to see, actually. So it's called variation, characterization of eigenvalue. So, so suppose that you have a real symmetric uh, matrix, right? Then um, what's going to be, what is going to be um, lambda 1, the biggest, uh, the minimum eigenvalue? Well, it's going to be like, if you look at, all of this, um, if you look at this ellipsoid, it's gonna ask you where, which excess is gonna be like the minimum guy here and say how, how much is uh, it stretched your unit vector, right? And um, so ex exactly this thing, like you minimize over all, all, all vectors and you, if you assume that X is a unit one, if X have unit norm, then you don't care about this. And you really ask like, in which direction uh, that M really like stretch the least and, and look at that stretch. That is the lambda one. On the other hand, lambda N, the one that is biggest, uh, it's gonna be just the same uh, where you you take the maximum instead, right? What about lambda two? Um, lambda two is is just you. You can just write it as well. Um, you know, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be orthogonal to to the first, like the second eigenvalue. The second eigenvector is going to be orthogonal to the first one. And then among, like, so you, you just ignore that direction of first eigenvector and look at the rest of the space and try to minimize over all that space. Well, uh, then you will get uh, lambda 2. Does it make sense? OK. OK. And, um, so in general, uh, what will be lambda k? Well, you, you will look among all of the k-dimensional vector, uh, k-dimensional space, right? Um, and then, so maybe I, I write this one first. If this is lambda 2, then you look at 2 dimension. It's gonna be the same thing as look at two-dimensional space, and then maximizing. Why? Because if if you take the two-dimensional space one, so then um, then among inside this space, um, well, <laughs> lambda one gonna take the first direction, and so the rest is gonna be lambda two. Um, so if it is 
lambda k, then you, then you take k dimensional space, and then you look at the maximum direction inside that space. That's lambda k. Yeah. Or in the, another way is just to take like a vector which is orthogonal to the span of, of the, the k minus one vector before it, and then uh, minimize that. Okay, that is that is just uh, the fact that that I'm gonna use uh, in this class, right? So, so now now let's let's go to our um, content, which is um, Laplacian of graph. It's gonna be a matrix related to graph, which is one of the most important. So, how does it define? So, if you have a graph G. And let's say the weight is non-negative, okay. uh, non-negative weight. Then uh, you all know how to define adjacency symmetrix. Uh, well, it's just like the matrix where if there is an edge between uh, u and v, then you put the weight w u v uh, uh, in in the entry u v. So that is adjacency matrix, okay. And note that this this matrix is going to be symmetric because the graph is undirected. Okay. And how about degree matrix? Well, degree matrix is just the diagonal matrix. So everything outside diagonal is zero. And on the on the entry u u here, you put the the degree of of the of the of the node u, which is what which is just a sum of of the of the weight around it. Okay. Okay. So by the way, in in this class, I'm gonna use d for degree because I will use it so many times, and D is just shorter. And so, so which means that D of S here is going to be the same thing as sum of degree, which is the volume. Okay. And now, uh, the Laplacian matrix is nothing but degree matrix minus adjacency matrix. That's Laplacian. Very simple to to define. When you use D, is it weighted degree or not? Weighted degree. Weighted. So it's a sum of all the weight. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, A is not diagonal. A is really like each of the node. Oh, what is the diagonal of A, you ask? Yeah. Well, if, if there is no self-loop, then, then it's going to be zero. If there is self-loop, then you put the weight uh, there. Yeah. So that actually might be a good question, good, good thing to, to point out. That is, in Laplacian, then the self-loop doesn't matter. Because if you add one self-loop at u, it's going to co contribute the weight here, but u minus it from A to. So it's just cancel out. OK. So now, um, so Laplacian is going to be real and symmetric. So all eigenvalues are going to be real, too. And um, that's just the first fact. But let's, let's understand it more than that. Um, so to understand LG, let me look at a Laplacian of very simple graph. I call it LUV. It's just, just a Laplacian of graph, which is have nothing but one edge from U to V with weight one. And let's look at the Laplacian of this graph. Well, you can see that the Laplacian of this graph is going to be super, super simple. 
Well, you will have just everything is zero except three, uh, four uh, entries. You have one on on the diagonal on the diagonal here. Only two of them here, and here is you get uh, minus one. Right? Okay. So that's how um, Laplacian of single edge graph look like, just for entry. So, but now you can, we can, let's try to observe here, right? Then Laplacian of a graph, G, is literally just the sum of this simple matrix. Uh, well, why? Because if you, if you take each edge, E and scale it up by the weight, WE, then that's going to be Laplacian of the weighted edge. And then you sum over all, over all uh, edges. Then you, you, get, um, you will get a Laplacian of the graph. So it's kind of nice to see that the sum of this simple thing is, and you can just check that they are exactly uh, D minus A. Sorry? L-E. L-E, so, L, well, L-E is the, uh, if, if uh, E is, is U-V. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not, not, not single entry, uh, four entry, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. It's four entry here, yeah. yeah. All right, so everyone with me on this inequality? Okay. So now let's, let's study just, so because, because the Laplacian of a graph is just a sum of this simple thing, so maybe let's just study um, this simple thing, LE or LUV, um, because um, it's going to be enough. So, if you have, um, if you take any vector x, okay, and you you multiply on both sides to to L U V, what you're gonna get? Well, let's just draw things, right? Um, you have one one minus one minus one here, and you multiply x on both sides, then like. How, how would you, what, so, you're gonna get like this thing gonna correspond to, to x u square, and this thing you're gonna get x v square, and for this you're gonna get like minus 1 times x u times x v, uh, x v, and the same here, so you get 2 of uh, minus two x u x v, but that is exactly um, x u minus x v square. Okay. So, so in particular, suppose that your vector x is a zero one vector. So, like if x is a zero one vector, and let's say that x is like is a one on on correspond to set S. So you have one on, on the entry inside S and zero outside. Then you can see that this thing, just by blocking, uh, blocking uh, uh, vector one S into this um, equation, right? It means that you will get one if and only if uh, UV is cut by the, the cut S. That is, if, if one of you, like only one of you and V, exactly one of them is inside S. Right? Because if one, both of them, like if you and V are outside or inside, then they're gonna cancel each other out or they are just zero. Okay. 
And, but not that, now, now what, what if we try to study instead of the, the product of here, x, l, u, v, x, if we look at Laplacian of the graph itself, well, this you gonna you will get just this is just a sum over all edges, and um, and you you have to look at each of these, right? But just from here, because this is just this thing is just a sum here, and you can plug in this by by this. Um, uh, quadratic form here. So that's why it means that if you take any vector x, x lg x is going to be to be this thing. So let's and okay, one more thing. And if x correspond to uh, a vector, that, that, like in the indicator vector of a cut S, then you can see that this will exactly be the cut size, right? Because you really just sum over all edge, edges. And uh, each term here will be one if and only if the edge is cut. Good. So you can see now that Laplacian is related to, to cut, at least. Um, but instead of you looking at 0, 1 vector, now you, kind of, it's, you can define it uh, for, for any vector. Uh, let's just try to interpret this a bit, right? Uh, what, what, what is this thing? So, so you think of x as a, as m, you, x vec, vector x is like an embedding of nodes into a line. So, so if this is, think of this as a real line, and maybe x u1 is here, x u2 is here, and so on, you have a bunch of nodes here. And, um, and so given x, then you, you, you just write this real. Uh, point in real lines. And what is, what is L x, x L x? Well, you, you look at each edge, right? Suppose that there is an edge between u1 and uh, u2. So maybe this is an edge in the graph. Then you just take the distance between this and square, right? So, like, at least the way I think about it is like, suppose that you have a graph and you have a vector x, now you kind of, you have some graph here, and now you, you kind of put a nail, like you, you have a node u, and then you, you just, say that this guy should be here, x u is here, v, so v is, if v is here, then you put x v here. And now each of the edge, you think of it as a spring. So what is the energy of the spring? It's gonna be like a distance square. So, um, this is the energy of the spring. So, and um, the coefficient here is like um, the coefficient of the spring, <laughs> like how strong is a spring. And so, what is this? It's gonna be the total energy when you, <laughs> when you like put a graph in the real line with a spring, <laughs> a lot of spring. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, I like that interpretation. Okay, so let's go further. Um, is this somehow the reason why they call it 
I, I believe so. I don't know, like, I don't really know much. I, I don't study physics, but there, there, there are, like, the name comes from physics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's Laplacian. It's kind of natural thing to look at. Like, itself is natural, and when you look at the product here, it's natural too. Now, um, let's look at um, the, the, the eigenvalue of Laplacian. Okay. The first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna claim is that the minimum eigenvalue is gonna be always like small, zero, always zero. And um, with very simple corresponding vector, which is just all one vector. Okay. Also, but this, the first one is always zero, but the rest might not always be zero. But actually, you can say that the kth one is going to be zero if and only if the graph has at least k connected component. Um, okay, so let's let's try to prove that. So like this is just a more simple fact about I can read, read, um, like you can see that just looking at the I can value you you see some something about the graph now, okay. Um, which is like the whole connected component doesn't have any cut, right? Cut is zero. So mm -hmm. which is zero. Uh, cut, uh, the, uh, the vector, the representation vector of that set of nodes, which is, belongs to a connected component. If you use that, then cut of that is zero, right? Yeah. Well, and then putting that uh, for, for that particular vector, if you put it the lambda k times uh, the norm of that vector is anyway non zero, so it's zero. Um, I'm not sure if, like, maybe that's like the right intuition, but uh, it's not exactly the way I prove it. So, <laughs> and, and I don't really see how to bring what you suggest to the real proof. So, let's, let's just see the proof. So, so this this one is not informative. It's always zero, but let's let's prove it first. Like regardless of what what graph is, it's gonna be always zero. Um, and um, and so let's let's see. Uh, the first eigen value is just um, so this is a Lille quotient. So I I forget to mention um, this thing. It's called Lille quotient, Ray, Rayleigh, Rayleigh quotient of x with respect to, to m. So, so the first eigenvalue, you can just write this thing as minimum uh, uh, minimum x, oh, which is non-zero. Uh, you minim try to minimize Rayleigh quotient, right? So, which is, which is, this thing. But you have seen that um, this is just a sum over all edges and the uh, difference in the distance square. Okay. But this is a square, so it's going to be always at least zero. And the weight is also at least zero, it's non negative weight. We assume this always. So, so this is at least zero. But it's going to be at most zero as well. Why? Because if you put like all one vector as x, then uh, everything here will cancel. So, so there is the x is an x such that this is at most zero. So. That's why the first eigenvalue is at most zero. So that's that's why it is exact, exactly zero. 
and uh, and you can check that. In fact, um, if you take a vector one here and multiply it to the Laplacian, then actually you will get zero on all entry. Uh, why is that? Yeah, like L is just A minus B minus A, and if you multiply it by one, then like the first row from this is gonna be like, if you look at the, the I, the U row, then you get the, the degree of U from here, but you, but when you multiply one to this, this guy, you just really just summing over all edges incident to you and subtract that. So, so they cancel, yeah. They cancel on every node, so you get vector, zero vector. Okay. So the first eigenvalue, eigenvector is just all one. So that is just a simple one, like not informative at all. Um, so now let, let's look at the kth one. Okay. So no, so again, we call that the kth eigenvalue. You, it equals to like um, when you take any uh, k-dimensional space and try to minimize over all k-dimensional space and take some x in that. And uh, maximize the, and you try to maximize the Rayleigh quotient here. Yeah. All right. So there are just two directions we need to prove. So suppose that there are like k connected component. You need to prove that uh, the lambda is zero, and vice versa. So let's let's prove one direction. Okay, well, so suppose that there are k component in the graph. C1, C2, C3, right? Then we can define like, you can define like um, vectors, like such that is all one inside C1. So this is, they are all one for, for C1 and one for C2, and one for C3. And you take this, like the space that is spanned by, by these, these three vectors, okay? So this is gonna be like the, the space of dimension at like K. Yeah. And now, um, well, we'll take, now, if you if you look at any vector any vector x in v i'm going to show that like if you if you put if you look at the rayleigh quotient of of x it's going to be at most zero okay so why is that so you can see that, well, on like what what is the contribution of 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 edges inside the uh, inside each? So okay, so 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 take so first of all take any x right and look at each of the component c i. We know that entry of x in c i is going to be the same, like is. Like everything here is either 10, 10, 10, 10, because they, they are span, like the span of, V is a span of this vector. Yeah. So, so there are constant inside each component. And so if you look at the contribution of, to the Rayleigh really quotient inside the component, well, it's gonna be zero because this is like both both of them are the same number. Okay. 
And this is the same for every component. But are there like, but there are no edge be between the component. So that's everything already. So, so that's why the uh, Rayleigh quotient is zero. So, so that's, that already proved that you find, like, I identify some space, V, such that the maximum thing here is at most zero. So, so this is at most zero. So take another direction. So suppose now that, um, that the, the eigenvalue is zero, right? So if the, if the again value k, the k again value is zero, then it means that there exists some space, k dimensional space v, such that the maximum thing here is zero. So I have this space, and now I'm gonna just construct some, some like I'm gonna say that there must be k connected component just by the promise that there is such a space. And um, again, um, if you take any vector x in this space, you still know that um, inside each of the, con each of the connected, connected component, um, the, the entry inside the component must be constant. Why is that? Because if not, then it would contribute more than zero to the Rayleigh quotient. So everything inside, like you have, you have component and you know that if you take x, everything here is gonna be the same. Here can maybe 20 and, and something like that. All right. But so, so which means what? So everything, like everything here must be constant. So it means what? It means that the space must be in this span, right? Like the space is kind of simple enough that if you take you know that everything inside the, the component are, are, are constant, so the space is quite simple. V is in this, inside this span. And if it, it means what? Uh, and, and let's say I, I say that um, C, Z, 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 where Z count, count the number of connected component. But if, if V is, is inside this span, it means that the dimension of V, which is K, must be at most Z. All right. So this implies what? It, it implies that the, the number of connected components is at least K. All right. Um, make sense? Or? All right. So, so again, uh, we have that uh, lambda one is not informative, but if you look at lambda two already, it's gonna be more than zero if and only if the graph is connected. Okay. So you might like once you see this, you might ask, okay, if it's zero, okay, it's not the graph is not connected, but if it is very close to zero, what can we say about it? Does it mean that uh, the graph is being close to not connected? And the answer is gonna be yes, and we will see the proof. Like, but before that, um, it's actually gonna be uh, nicer to look at something called normalized Laplacian. It's similar, but like you scale it a bit. So, so the normalized Laplacian is just, uh, the Laplacian, when you scale it down on both sides by the degree, um, like you multiply, like basically you want to, to like, 
to multiply it by, uh, to divide it by, by degree, something like that. But this is a matrix. So, so you need to, and uh, this is a matrix. And if you look at this, then this matrix is not symmetric any, anymore, right? So you want it to be symmetric. So you multiply on both sides by, by like a d to the minus, d to uh, minus one half and here too. So this is gonna be symmetric now. But intuitively you want to divide by d basically. Okay. And, uh, and, um, and if you look at the equation, now the first, the first term which used to be d now become one, uh, become i, and um, the second term which used to be a, the HNC symmetrics you multiply on both sides by, by d to the like, one half, minus one half. And you can check, I, I suggest that you try to check by yourself that everything that we conclude before about Laplacian still holds exactly for, for normalized Laplacian. And that should be very uh, convincing because this is just scaling. Yeah. But try to check. Okay, now, um, I want to prove this, that if you look at um, the second eigenvalue of normalized Laplacian, now it's gonna be, so instead of, if it is just Laplacian, then, then you have this, okay. One sec. If it is just Laplacian, then you have this, right? Min uh, x one. Why? Why this is? Why? Why x? Why? Why here? Like, why do I write uh, x? Because first eigenvalue is the one. All oh, one. Yeah. Right. So that's why we want it to be orthogonal to the first eigenvector. Uh, yeah. Now, like, if we look at the normalized Laplacian, then you will get d here, and you get d here. So that's kind of different. But you will see that it's actually going to be more useful to, to have x dx on the, de on the de denominator. Uh, Um, maybe we, before I, I prove before I prove this, let, let me explain some intuition why it's a good thing to look at normalized Laplacian. Why do we want d here? Okay. So so let's look at like so it, take this right. I will prove this soon, but if you take this, look at this equation, then you will see some similarity between, between the conductance and the second eigenvalue of normalized Laplacian. Why? Well, this is just what I just claim. Okay. But the, the, the conductance of a graph is nothing but you minimize or I'll cut, right? And this is just a cut size over the volume when, when S is such that dS is less than, than half. Okay. But you see, I mean, I can write it down, so I can rewrite things here such that it looks very similar to, to here. Because when I just said that, when if, this, if you take x here, 
to be like a zero one vector, then when x is zero one vector, this thing is exactly the cut size, and this thing is exactly the sum of the degree, so it's a volume, right? So it means that conductance and lambda two are really like minimizing over the same object, but different domain. For lambda two, we we minimizing over uh, our vector x that is uh, orthogonal to d, and for conductance, it's like zero one vector. Okay. So you see the similarity, but um, let's let's prove it. Uh, that that you, you have this thing. Well, first, um, if you take, um, if you look at the second eigen uh, value of normalized Laplacian, then um, just by definition, it's, it's just minimizing this Rayleigh quotient, right? But it should, should be, um, the vector should be orthogonal to to the first eigenvector, but for for normalized Laplacian, the the first eigenvector is is gonna be like this vector. Okay. By by here, I, I mean that it's just this is just the vector where uh, is uh, okay. All right, so we have we have this uh, just by definition. But now, uh, if I just replace, like, rewrite um, x, define x to be d to the minus one half times v, and I rewrite things, then I, I I'm gonna be done basically. Why? Because, well. You just look at the equation here, and n g, the normalized Laplacian is nothing but this Laplacian scale, right? But now this thing is x. This thing is x. And what is v? V is not, like v is a d d d to the one half times x. So things things below are gonna be this one. And also, you can see that here we, we minimize over our v such that it's orthogonal to, to d to the one half. But v is orthogonal to d to the one half if and only if x is orthogonal to d. Well, you can just check the equation. I don't go over it. All right. And this mapping is really a bijection. So, so if you find like, if you find some x, you're gonna get some v that minimize that, and if you get v, you get a, an x. So it's really the same thing. So so I, so now I can just rewrite uh, this thing as this. Okay, clear. Um, what's d again? Oh, d is a degree degree uh, diagonal degree matrix. Lowercase d. Ah, lowercase d is a, a vector where each of the each of the the entry is the degree. So d is the vector where the u thing is the degree. Where and I, I write this as d. Okay, so now, now you see that lambda two of the second, uh, uh, like second value of a uh, normalized Laplacian is really close, like at least syntactically is closely related to, to conductance. And uh, we're gonna really show that, like although the, the, the domain are different, they are really like 
they are almost the same up to some 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 factor okay so lambda 2 does not only tells us if the graph is connected or not it's not just an extreme case it's really measure how well connected the graph is if the lambda if lambda 2 is big then the conduct times must be high and if it is small then you must they must exist a sparse cut. So this is if and only if, and you see now that this really gives like another characterization of conduct of a, of an expander, right? Um, the graph is an expander if and only if like lambda is big, lambda two is big. Okay. And this is called Shiga inequality. Okay. So, so, like, if there is a sparse cut, lambda must be small. And if lambda is small, you can, there is a sparse cut, but not just that there is a sparse cut. Actually, there is an algorithm that finds such cut such that, like, the find the cut such that the conductance is at most this thing. So this is, like, algorithmic. Okay. And once you have this, then, then you, you, you have that this is at most this, too. But just by applying the, equi the inequality again. Okay. So what does it say here, actually? I will prove this soon, but let's look at the, the meaning. If the graph have very good conductance, it has high conductance, then, then this algorithm actually gives you like uh, all one approximation algorithm for for um, for uh, for the conductance. I should say that O1 approximation algorithm for sparsest cut, for like to find a cut that is uh, such that the conductance is at, almost as good as the minimum conductance. Um, yeah. And it's O1 because you can see that um, there is, like, if this is a constant, then there is no, like, there is no dependency on N here. Yeah. So it's actually a very good. Algorithm to find sparse cut if the graph is a uh, have good conductance, but yeah, the approximation is actually very bad um, when when the conductance is is very small. For example, if if conductance is is like one over n, if this is one over n, is one over n, then this the algorithm only uh, can, might only find the conductance, like the graph, the cut with conductance root of one over n. So, and know that this is much, much bigger than this thing. Right. So this is like square root of something less than one, so it's bigger. Yeah. Okay. And I want to just say that there is a big open problem whether actually there is the O1 approximation algorithm for for conductance for any graph. If there is, then then it would reveal some conjecture. But the conjecture is not proved to, so like we don't know. Um, and again, actually note that we have seen log n approximation algorithm before. Uh, how? Like Rather low relaxation, right? Yeah. And but the approach that we saw is tight because of flow cut gap, and uh, you can think about it why. But yeah, it's in the homework too. There was some better algorithm with square root log n approximation, and that is the best known. So there is still a gap. If you can imp like there is a gap, like all one is still open, but uh, can you, but the best known is square root log n. Yeah. 
Okay. And ARV is um, Arola Rao Vasirani. Does it use the flow and subtract of arguments? Like it should use something else because flow cut is kind. Yeah, it doesn't relax through LP. It relaxes through SDP, but it's going to be still related to flow cut. It uses like some embedding too, okay. but stronger than Bogan embedding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. But by the way, this thing is tight. Um, and there are some examples. Um, I will just, you can just look at the example and try to convince yourself. But I will just skip that. that. But the, the, the bow are tight. Yeah. Now I'm going to prove it. OK. So let's prove one direction. That is, if there is a sparse cut, if conductance is small, then you must have small eigenvalue. So this thing must be, like lambda 2 must be small. Okay. Well, how to do that? Well, the cut is, if there is a sparse cut, so let's take some cut S that is sparse, okay? And let's say that S is on the smaller side. So, you have S here. And then um, basically you want to define a vector based on S. And the, the natural one is just to define it to be all one vectors. Um, no, like a indicator vector of, of S, right? But um, but to, to bound, to bound this thing, note that this is, this is minimizing like the lambda two is to minimizing over um, x mm, orthogonal to d. Right. So we have this vector, um, this vector um, of s, but somehow we want to construct another vector x orthogonal to d such that this is small. If we can do it, then we are done. But OK, this vector is not, orthogonal, is not orthogonal to D. So what do we do? We just make it orthogonal to D just by like translate. You have one S, and you just translate all of the, all of the entry such that they become orthogonal to D. So, so just choose a scale sigma here in the right way. And then you can check that once you translate it enough, then, um, then uh, y will be orthogonal to d. Okay. All right. And now, because y is now orthogonal to d, then we have that lambda 2. Uh, this should be of ng is at most this uh, ratio. But OK, what is this y ly? It's going to be the same thing as, it's going to be the same thing as uh, S one S uh why why this is the case? Because uh, this one is Yeah. Yeah. Like vector one goes to zero or another way to look at it is that that well this thing is like um is this thing is just really invariant through translation, right? Uh, this thing is the sum is a sum of something like this. And each of these terms is just, when you translate it, it's just stay the same. 
So, so you have that this is this thing, but this thing is nothing but the cut size. Okay, so we have that this first, first term here is at most a cut size. Now let's calculate the second term, like the, 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 demo, the denominator. We want to prove that this is close to the, the volume of, the, of S, right? If, it, if it's just uh, one vector, like, uh, like indicator vector of S, then it would be the volume of S. But now we translate it a bit, and we want to say that it doesn't change much. So, well, it's just really calculation. And um, can, let me skip it. <laughs> Because it's just really calculation, and you can it, it will be the case that um, you you still get the the volume of S here with some factor here, but this factor is like a constant. This thing is constant because S is on the smaller side, so that's why like actually like uh, something like one half at most uh, at at least, yeah, at least one half. So that's why you get that um, this is at most like the the, the numerator is this much, and the uh, denominator denominator is that. So so that is like, and this is true for for every cut s, right? So we have that um, now. Now we we are done. Um, Lambda 2 is at most two times conduct times. So sparse cut implies small eigenvalue. Oh, that's one direction. Now, different uh, direction. If you have small eigenvalue, you will, there must exist a sparse cut. Not just exist, actually, from the proof itself, it will imply some algorithm. That is very fast too. So let's see. So actually, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to prove that given any vector x orthogonal to d, then we're going to find a cut such that the conduct times of it is at most this ratio. And this is enough. Why? Because if you. Uh, Like, if you have this back, like the S, okay, you have that lambda 2 of Laplacian is this much. And if you take the arc mean of this thing, then you're gonna arc mean of this. So basically, you just plug in like a, the second eigenvalue, uh, second eigenvector. Like it should like basically the arc mean of this thing and plug it into this, then then you would like this thing is gonna be replaced by lambda two, so you're done. Okay. So so now I'm gonna prove the theorem. Okay. And actually, it will be important that this work for any vector x orthogonal to d. Not just exactly the the arc mean of of this thing, because uh, later we were gonna show that there is a fast algorithm actually to find this x. Um, the exact one might not be easy to find, but the one that this x, the the one that approximately minimizes this thing, is gonna be easy to find. So so it's important to 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 make it work for any x. Okay, and there will be like uh, three different steps to in the proof. So given x such that x is orthogonal to d, we will like from x, I'm gonna produce some vector y, which is center. I will define later what it is, but I will produce another vector y 
such that this ratio doesn't increase. And then from y, I'm going to produce another vector z, such that the ratio doesn't increase again. And this z is going to be like, have a nice structure enough, such that from c, I cannot define a cut. And the conductance of the cut is going to be at most this ratio and have square root here. And once I'm done with all these three steps, I'm going to get the theorem. OK, so let's start with the first step. From, from x, I'm going to produce center vector y. So what do, what, do, what do I mean by that? So let's assume first that x, vector x is sorted. Just by the, remember the vertices, right? You can just sort, sort things. And now assume that uh, entry of x are sorted. Um, we will say that the vector is center with respect to D. If, if, so, so suppose this is zero. This vector is centered with respect to D if everything below zero, like all the Y that which is less than zero, when you sum the degree here on this, it's going to be at most half. And everything that is strictly more than zero, the, the volume is, the total volume is at most half too. There can be some, some guy that have some, there can be some guy here, right? That is strict, like exactly zero. But every, the total volume here on, on the less, strictly less than and more than zero is at most half. And basically, given x, which might not be center, we can make it center. How? Well, you can just translate it, like move x so that it becomes center. So how do you do it? Just choose like one. There are many choices, but like one, you can just maybe choose like the minimum index, right? Uh, J to be the minimum index such that the sum, like, so you have x here, x1, x2, x3, and so on. Maybe all of them is positive. Might not be, like, maybe 0 is here. But what you do, you just look at the first J guy such that like before j, before j, the, the volume is, um, is less than half. And after j, the volume is more than half. And I just now just translate everything so that at this point, the xj here becomes 0. Now it's going to be center. OK. So. So let's define y to be this uh, x after translation. Okay. So y is really x after translate by minus, like minus translate everything by xj is center. And um, we can, you, can, you can verify that the ratio for y doesn't increase. Well. For numerator, it's clear. Doesn't change at all. And for the denominator, it will, like, the denominator only can only increase. And why is that? Well, if you look at any vector, like, if you look, take, take any vector of this form, like, it's, it's going to be Let's say v of s is, is x with sum, and, and you can translate it by 1. And let's say s is like a, a parameter that you can translate. Okay. And you, like, this is now calculus. You just, like, the, the minimum s, like, 
if you want to choose s such that this term is minimized, um, how do you do, how do you do that? Well, you you just take the derivative at s, and um, you will see that it is minimized when um, and the derivative of this thing uh, by s, like with respect to s, is this thing. So 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 this thing is minimized when when this term is zero. But x is the one which is like, in other words, like this v s is orthogonal to d, right? But x is the one that is really orthogonal to d. So x is the one such that uh, this is this form is minimized when you translate it. Then y can only increase, like when when you choose y by translating x, it can only increase. Okay, so that's the first step. Okay, you just translate it, and uh, you get something better. It's now center. Okay. So how does it look like? You have y. There is some zero, and there is y here on the ne negative side, and some guy here on the positive side, and. Um, Basically, let's let me write it like this. So, y is y plus minus y minus. So, basically, I define everything here to be y minus a uh, y plus, and everything here is y minus. But I put minus term here so that both of them are non-negative uh, vector. Make sense how I define it, okay? So both y minus y plus and y minus are like they have disjoint non-zero entries. They are now non-negative. Both of them are now non-negative vector. And the sum of like they are small with respect to d, by which I mean the sum of non-negative like the sum of non-zero entry are like at most half. This is true for for one min y minus and y y plus. Okay. I'm go I'm gonna claim that um, if you take if you look at the ratio for y plus or y minus, one of them is gonna be better than y, gonna be smaller. And you will take z to be the one that minimizes this. So, okay, calculation. Um, all right. Hmm. So, but that's at least that's the that's our goal, right? One of them will be better, and if if you believe this, then um, I'm gonna take Z to be either one of them, such that is the one that minimizes like that with. Like less, uh, like the one that minimizes the the term. So so we we have that the ratio of z is at most the ratio of y, and z going to be non-negative, and also all non-zero of all non-zero in z will be at least like at most half. Okay. So let's let's prove this. That's one of them is gonna be good. Like one one of y plus or one y minus gonna be better than before. Well, to do that is like this thing looks scary, but it's really nothing. Well, you you just take the um, the definition and you just rewrite this above the term above by by this thing that we have seen before. Right, and now um, what is what is y u? Y u is uh, y u plus minus y u minus, and this is y v plus minus y v minus. 
And now you rearrange things a bit. You put this thing together, you get this part. You put this thing together, you get this part. This is exactly the same, just rearranging. Okay. And I'm gonna just, this is a claim that I'm gonna need to, to prove later. That is this term is at least this term. Let's take that for now and look further. So, so you have that. You look at this ratio. And, and this, like with the sum here. Well, you have like the, it's like, it's just the same thing as A1 plus A2 over B1 plus B2 is, A i minus B i. Okay. So that's why you I, I can just take min instead of plus here. Okay. And you, you have this ratio. But this is nothing but the ratio of y plus or y minus. Okay. So the only the only thing I need to prove is why why this is at most this thing. And, um, and well, you just, you just need to look at the, the contribution of each edge, right? If, su suppose that u and v are such that the entry of y are both positive or both negative, then, um, then they're gonna give the same contribution on both sides. Um, so because if both of them are positive, then, then you get contribution here, and this is nothing. And also, um, oh, sorry, this should be minus here. Then you get contribution, and this is nothing. So it's gonna be like this thing, square, and this thing, square. So they are exactly the same. And um, if both of them are negative, it's the same. But if one of them is positive, one of them is negative, you can check that um, the contribution to the left is going to be this thing. Like you sum them and square. But on the right, you're going to get like the square. You square it first and you sum. But when you sum and then square, it's gonna be big, bigger than uh, square and then sum. So, yeah, I'm not sure how, how to make it like less algebraic, but this is algebraic thing, so, yeah. Okay, so let me finish. Well, we have Z. That is quite good now. Uh, C is like a, a vector such that you have zero and one and, and some something here. And everything here is uh, positive. This is C. And uh, some of them, some of the non-zero entry, uh, some of the degree of non-zero entry is at most half, okay? So what you can do, what are you gonna do? Um, huh. I'm gonna, okay, I should finish, right? One sec. Huh. Should we stop for now or?